So this is a squash recipe that, uh, we'll be honest, we actually tried it for the first time while making this video. And uh, kind of as a spoiler alert, this was so good we actually made it a second time the night after, which is what this is, uh, to have it again. So we recommend you try it. So uh, yeah, check this one out. Today in the kitchen, we're tackling some of this squash. As you've seen in Chris's previous videos, multiples of them, uh, we grew a lot of squash and it is starting to turn. So we're kind of getting creative around here and trying some new recipes. And tonight for dinner, we're going to make, and I'm going to butcher the name of it, but uh, Crispel, which is an Italian crepe. And we're going to stuff that with our squash. So first thing on the agenda is to get the squash roasting. So what we're going to do here is, um, you can see some of the uh, damage we're talking about. It's not damage, but they're, they're starting to spoil down in our basements in storage. So we're kind of using them as we can. We're going to be doing some canned squash and some pickled squash, things like that. So we're going to save the necks if they're in good enough shape to do so, because those are so much easier for chopping up into little cubes and things. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the um, balls off these <laughs> and we're going to take the seeds out and get them roasting in the oven. And while these are roasting, we're going to get our Italian crepes ready. We have got the squash cut in half, I've already kind of gone ahead and done three of them, but I'm just showing you here. So when we go to roast them, basically just a little bit of olive oil trickled in there, just a smidgen. And all I do is use my hand to make sure I get it all around there. Just like that. And then flip them over. Uh, one thing you want to do when you're roasting is you do want to try and cut flat so that they stay. That helps them steam better. But some of them we had some blemish marks, which is not the end of the world, but I had to puncture skin and we had to cut off some bits. So we may have it a little bit drier, but that's okay for what we're going to make anyways. But this is the same method that you would use if you were going to be making butternut squash soup or any other roasted, you know, squash product. Uh, but we're going to wait for our oven to get to temperature. We need these at 375 and you're going to roast them for anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes. It really depends on each individual squash. So as soon as you get to that point that you can poke in them and or you know feel them in there and they feel soft and squishy, then you're there. So while the squash is roasting, uh, we're going to move ahead with our um, Italian crepes. But I just wanted to mention that this recipe does come from another one of my favorite books that I have. I've had this book for, oh gosh, many years now. And uh, it's, I imagine you can get it on Amazon if anybody's interested, but it has some really, really great unique canning recipes as well as dinner recipes and things for using that canning that you've uh, done. So we are making the recipe out of there. Now we need to make the batter for our crepes and then let it sit for 30 minutes. So that's why we're doing this while the uh, squash is roasting. So we're starting with three eggs in our uh, container, three quarters of a cup of flour, half a teaspoon of kosher salt. I use a coarse salt, uh, just needs to be a non-iodized, and one tablespoon of parsley. Now, this is right of the garden. I'm just going to give it a bit of an extra crush just to be on the safe side. One cup of water. We're going to put that in. That's everything for our crepes. I'm going to use my immersion blender, and you're going to blend this and then let it sit for 30 minutes. I'm not going to blend it on camera because it's loud, but you get the idea. So here we go. Squash is all uh, cooked or roasted. And uh, we're going to let this cool for a minute before we uh, try to take the skins off. The next part will be to separate the flesh out, uh, probably with just a spoon, from the, uh, the skin and uh, discard the skin and then uh, go on to the next step of making the uh, flesh into the filling for these uh, savory crepes. So we are to the point we're going to make our crepes and then we will do our filling. So it's one quarter cup of your uh, crepe mixture. Put it on, and all I'm doing kind of is rocking the uh, pan a little bit. It's not so hot that I can't hold the handle yet to get it to spread out. Good enough. That's a better pan. It works better. There we go. And like Chris said earlier, these are a savory crepe, so uh, 
they've got the parsley and the salt in them, which is interesting. But uh, you want it to go for about a minute on the one side. And then you flip. And basically, you do about 30 seconds on the other side, get it out, and start the next one. So we're going to be ready to kind of make our filling and put these together pretty quick, I think. Time for the filling. We have one and a half cups of the roasted uh, butternut squash kind of puree middle, I guess you could call it. Then you want a half a cup of a soft cheese like ricotta, something like that, or if you have a homemade goat, uh, we used to make a homemade goat cheese that was kind of like a soft cheese. Uh, then you want a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. So we'll just get that all in there. Don't have to worry too much about mixing it now because we're going to blend this all together. I'm going with an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. It says a generous grating. Well, I don't have a solid piece to grate from and I don't know exactly how much a generous grating is. So we're going with an eighth. Hopefully that's not going to be too strong. I'm doing a quarter teaspoon of the uh, coarse salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. That might be a little bit for uh, too much black pepper for some. We like it that way. I kind of always cook heavy on the salt and pepper. But uh, that's basically everything in there. We're going to take our handy dandy grater thingamabobber. Not grater. Immersion blender. Immersion blender. And we're going to blend this up. And then we're going to bring you back when it's time to roll them all together. I forgot to mention that when we are doing this, we're going to add some of our frozen kale that we had from the garden this uh, summer. So I've mixed it all up with the immersion blender and got it all mashed in. And then I'm just going to put our kale, I'm not going to do too much, just a little bit. Uh, basically kind of subbing like spinach almost. And then we're going to stir that in before uh, piling it into our uh, crepes. Chris is working away rolling these. He is a master uh, Italian crepe maker. We're very excited for these. So once they are all rolled and put into the um, pan, I believe we ended up with nine. So it might not all fit. It's actually a recipe for eight. I should have put a little bit more batter in the frying pans when I did these, but I wasn't 100% sure. So we're gonna make them as a batch of eight and next time I'll know to make my crepes a little bit thicker. But uh, once these are all ready, we then put our homemade marinara sauce on top. Not sure if I've done a recipe for that one or not. If I did, we'll link it. And if not, then stay tuned next season. And uh, sprinkle with uh, cheddar cheese. We have our oven preheating. It's got to be 375. And then these are going to go in the oven to bake for 30 minutes. And then we'll do a taste test. Oh my gosh, this is looking so tasty already. That looks good. Top with some yummy cheddar cheese. Oh, that's going to bake up really good. So we ended up using about three quarters of uh, a pint jar of pasta sauce, marinara sauce. The recipe called for only a quarter cup of uh, hard cheese sprinkled on top. I think I went probably at least half a cup, but we like our cheese too. Got to adapt them to how we like it. Say magnifique, Christopher, now. <clears throat> now it goes in the oven. So here it is, all cooked and out of the oven. And uh, it's smelling really good. So we're going to uh, dish this up and actually finally eat some dinner. So in case we didn't uh, mention it, uh, you need to roast this dish in the oven uncovered for 30 minutes. So that's what we did. It got nice and crispy around the edges and the cheese melted wonderfully and the sauce really just kind of dried out, which really is, I'm super excited about this because I think it's going to be so good. And I'm really starving because we've been, you know, procrastinating on eating dinner. So, without further ado, I think we should eat it, and I'm not going to say too much because I want Chris to also share his reaction. Oh my. Hopefully it's not too hot. It's a big bite for public. <laughs> wow. I'll turn it around for you. Chris's turn. So we didn't actually mention, this is the first time we've made this recipe, so uh, we're going to see if this makes the cut as, uh, I guess, a regular recipe for us. Oh, it makes the cut. Mm-hmm. It's sweet, yet tomatoey, yet 
I don't know. Was, and it was relatively easy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a really, it wasn't a hard recipe. No. And it made quite a bit of food, so. I suggest note, adding it to your uh, recipe. Of yeah. squash recipes. Yeah, and stay tuned for future squash recipes. On that note, we're going to go and uh, 